with DHCC V Church. Although we are in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, it does not mean you cannot connect with us. We invite you to visit our website at www.dhcc.church and follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram at Destiny House Christian Center, Twitter at Destiny House CC, and YouTube at DHCC. This week's announcements at DHCC include our theme of the month, Flow, contextualized in John 7, 38, 
Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Wednesday Night Worship, streaming live on Facebook every Wednesday night, beginning at 7.30 p.m. with Apostle Dr. Pepper Martin. Check out our monthly newsletter entitled Destiny Speaks on our website at dhcc.church, featuring our member highlight of the month, Lady Sherelle Cruz. Need prayer? Contact our pastoral care team by sending your request to prayer at dhcc.church or submit your prayer request on our website at dhcc.church. Happy birthday to DHCC's own Bridget Livingston, Prophet Joseph Brown, Christopher Farrier, Angel Langley, and to all who may be listening, celebrating a birthday during the month of August. Happy anniversary to all those celebrating their marriage vows during the month of August. Now, for a message from Chef Jojo. Singles of Destiny House, what's good? It's your boy, Chef Jojo. So look, my godmother, Pastor Martin, told me that you guys wanted to have your own singles virtual cooking class. So look, I listened, and your request has been granted. We're going to be doing an end-of-the-summer-themed virtual class for you all, led by yours truly. And it's going to be a great time, great fellowship over good food. So I can't wait to meet you all, and I can't wait to start cooking. And um, I'll see you all soon, all right? Peace and God bless. You heard the chef? The singles ministry at Destiny House Christian Center is calling all singles to join them for virtual cooking time with Chef Jojo, Friday, September 4th at 8 p.m. on GoToMeeting. For further details, email info at dhcc.church. The Men of Destiny, MOD, is sponsoring a virtual men's forum entitled Overcoming the Pain of Survivor's Remorse on Monday, September 7th at 7.30 p.m. on GoToMeeting. For more information, email mod at dhcc.church. And now, a moment of silence to honor all the lives lost due to racial injustice. Remember, all lives will matter when Black Lives Matter to everyone. These are our announcements. Let us continue to govern ourselves accordingly. Let's prepare for worship. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Apostle Dr. Pepper Martin, Pastor-elect Sidney Martin, Pastor-elect Joseph Brown, and the DHCC Church family extends an open invitation for you to return. We look forward to seeing you again soon. May God bless you and continue to keep you in His care. Praise the Lord, everybody. We come on this Sunday to give God a great praise. Hallelujah. We give God our glory and honor. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. From God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just prepare our minds, body, and soul. Hallelujah for prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless your name and we give you glory. Father God, we ask that you have your way in this place. Let your will be done. Father, we ask that somebody will come and get saved. Somebody will come and get healed. Somebody will come and be delivered. Somebody will come and be set free. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, food on our table. Father God, we thank you for putting us on the wake up list. Father, you didn't have to do it, but you did. Father God, we ask that your presence will be known in this place. We ask that you throw your weight around, oh God. Father, we thank you for our apostle, Dr. Pepper Bonet Martin. God, we ask that you will give her word that will inspire somebody. Father, we ask that you will strengthen her on her spiritual and physical level, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. And by his stripes we are healed. Father, we ask that you will continue to bless Pastor-elect Sidney Martin. We ask that you will continue to bless Pastor-elect Joseph Brown in the name of Jesus. 
God, we ask that you will anoint Lady Cheryl Sharp, oh God, anoint, hallelujah, her vocal cords, that, you will, that she will be able to sing praises unto your name. Father, we ask that you will bless the minstrels, oh God, that they will be able to play songs unto Zion. God, we ask that you will bless our media team, bless our technology team in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. We stop you from, hallelujah, interfering with our worship on this morning. Father, we won't fail to give you praise. We won't fail to give you glory. We won't fail to give you honor. In Jesus' name, let's all clap our hands and say amen. Now at this time, we're going to receive our psalmist for this morning, Lady Cheryl Sharp. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the Lord on this morning, wherever you are, on your jobs, in your car, on the subway trains. We bless the Lord on this morning. Just clap your hands. Let's worship the Lord in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because I have no reason to fear. Even during COVID-19, I have no reason to fear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands wherever you are. Give God praise, glory, and honor. Final say, Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. 
of the Destiny House Christian Center where we will get you where you need to go riding on the Word of God. Hallelujah. Come on and help us. Bless Him. Oh, yeah, yeah. We give the Lord praise this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is welcome in this place. Hallelujah, we bless God for our psalmist on today in the person of Lady Cheryl Sharp and our officiant, hallelujah, Brother Christian Matthew. We thank God for all the minstrels. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But most importantly, we are most grateful that we can sense and tap in to the presence of God. Hallelujah, because the reason why we do what we do is because he did what he did. <laughs> oh, come on and help me give God a praise. I wish you would type in the comments and say, if it had not been for Jesus, oh God, why, where would I be? Yes, God, and we bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, Facebook. I'm unapologetically saved this morning. <laughs> and I'm unapologetically sanctified. And I'm unapologetically filled my God with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says we're two or three. Lord have mercy are gathered together.
the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your visitation. And now, God, as we prepare for your word, we honor your presence and we are grateful. Hallelujah, that it don't take us all day and all night to access the throne of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for wanting to be with us as much as we want to be with you. We thank you that you have allowed us to have a long-standing friendship. And as we get to know you more, we are excited about our future. We thank you for keeping power, sustaining power. We thank you for last week's word that everything shall live. Hallelujah. And now, God, we believe you for a fresh word from heaven for your people. And we praise your holy name. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And God's word is blessed. Now get your Bible and turn with me to the book of John, the 19th chapter. Hallelujah. And we are reading from the King James Version of God's Word. St. John, I'm talking about 19, turn to verse 34. We are reading St. John 19 and 34. And it reads as thus, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Thank you for a rhema word in Jesus' name. Amen. And the subject for this morning is, I'm going with the flow. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Tim, I'm going with the flow. Glory to God. There's a lot of flows that we are familiar with. There's the flow of air. There's the flow of water. There is the flow of wind. There's the flow of currency. There's the flow of blood. There's the flow of water. Amen. And here in this passage of scripture, I want to let you all know, just in case you were inquiring, Jesus did not bleed. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus did not bleed out of his side. The Bible says that the soldier pierced him and forthwith came there out blood and water. In other words, that indicates in the choice of the wording, hallelujah, that there was a flow, glory to God, out of his side flowed. It was a natural system. It was therefore here to fulfill the scripture. Later on in the chapter, in verse 35, it says, And he saw, and that saw it bear record. And his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. In other words, for these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. Glory to God. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. I want to let you know that sometimes things that look horrific, Elder Dent, in our lifetime, Brother Jonathan, hallelujah, that may have society uh, scratching their head and wondering why something so horrific could happen. Like, why would they even bother to pierce him? in the side after he was already crucified and had given up the ghost. Uh, but we that know God, and we and once you get to walk with him after a number of years and you get seasoned in the faith, you begin to understand the side of God, Tim, that God's word will not return unto him void, Cheryl, until it accomplishes that which it set out to do. So subsequently, in the following scriptures, it tells us that his word had already gone out and said, number one, there would be no broken bone. Number two, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Subsequently, the piercing had not yet taken place. But because his word had gone out and said that there would be an eyewitness that there would be no need to break his bones and that there would be a piercing. The piercing had not yet taken place. 
And there had to be, hallelujah, an apostle at Calvary to be able to be an eyewitness that the word that had been spoken before his death would subsequently be fulfilled during his death. And, though, and it happened rather after. I want to let somebody know that feels like they have been crucified. <laughs> and particularly during this time. And particularly going through what we have come to know and have been forced to embrace. COVID-19. You may feel that you have been crucified to a cross. What else can happen? And after the death of your emotions, the death of some of your loved ones, the death of some of your businesses, the death of some of your relationships. Subsequently, last week, Elder Dent said that the prophet Ezekiel, everything shall live and this week. Hallelujah. Yours truly is telling you we need to go with the flow. Hallelujah, because in order for everything to live, hallelujah, through the spirit of obedience, hallelujah, it will put us in a position where we can get into a natural flow of spiritual business. Oh, God, I'm not talking about following your dreams. I'm not talking about working toward owning property just for the sake of owning property. But what I'm talking about is to people with the kingdom mindset who are kingdom citizens. And when you become a kingdom citizen, Brother Tim, that deepens your relationship beyond church. Uh, churchgoers, hallelujah, are stuck on protocol. Churchgoers are stuck on buildings. Churchgoers are stuck on sound. Churchgoers can't praise them. Ain't nothing wrong with the drums. I love, love, love this drummer. But ain't nothing wrong with the drummers. Hallelujah. I love it. I love the dance. But I want to also let you know, just in case you were a skeptic, hallelujah, if I had no music, mm, my relationship with God predicates, hallelujah, that my praise don't start with the drum beat, neither does it stop with one. Huh? Because when you are sick in your body and are unto death, when you have already crossed over into death and God has brought you back, when you have already lost all that you could and you know without a shadow of a doubt the miracle working power of God for yourself. You are not reliant upon anybody else's testimony, anybody else's witness. Hallelujah. You are grateful that your grandmother prayed. You are grateful that you, the teachings of your parents. You are grateful for your upbringing. Hallelujah. But there comes a point in time in everybody's life where you must answer for your own accord. You cannot continue to shout predicated on what you hear somebody else testify about that's good for them but what about you huh what about me what is it about this Jesus that got great grandma and them so excited huh what is it about this Jesus that caused great grandma Elizabeth Ross to shout and to dance huh what is it hallelujah about this Jesus and what we used to make fun of as children after we got older and began to live a little while huh God began to become real to us and I want to stop right here and let somebody know the reason why you can't uh, seem to naturally go with the flow is because you're stuck. There's something that is blocking your ability. Hallelujah. Plugging up a hole. Hallelujah. Causing the currency to back up. Causing a flood in your life. Causing stoppages in your life. Causing you to be bound when you should be free. Causing you not to experience the miracle work and power of what the intended hallelujah scripture was intended to do to flow in its proper form hallelujah ah i want to let somebody know that god is concerned about your flow hallelujah and he wants you to get into position whereby the flow of your relationship is uninterrupted unabashed unstopped 
broken free. He is concerned about your relationship more than he is about your position in an institutionalized church. Huh? Because you can have a position from the pulpit to the door and still have no flow. You can have, hallelujah, credibility and still have no flow. You can have, hallelujah, social status and still have no flow. But to those who are spiritual, to those who are part of the remnant, to those who have been selected to become our witnesses to what other people are wondering about, I want to let you know that God had you to witness what society would reject as a horrific act of piercing our Lord in the side. Hallelujah. But I want to stop you right there before you become too judgmental, before you become too critical. And what looks horrific to you may have been predetermined, may have been prescripted, may have been prophesied, and now needs to come into full fruition hallelujah because his word hallelujah cannot go uh uh unfulfilled it will not return unto him void until it accomplishes that which it set out to do the soldier could not remove our lord from the cross until he had been pierced simply because god can do everything except to fail and lie <clears throat> Hallelujah. We serve a truth-telling God. We serve a right now God. And we serve a righteous God. Failure is not an option with God. And lying is not in his character. So because he spoke it, oh, it has to come to pass. Therefore, those of you who may have a flow interruption, who may be stopped, who may be bound, who may be suffering, who may be aching, who may be aching on the inside, aching on the outside, concerned about what the nation's going to do, concerned about the election, concerned about who's going to be president, concerned about women's rights, concerned about police brutality, concerned about black lives, matter, concerned about food, concerned about unemployment, concerned about employment, concerned about your marriage, concerned about your children, concerned about your church, concerned about offerings. I want to let you know that at some point you need to learn like what the scriptures say do. Cast your cares upon him for knowing that he cared for you. Hallelujah. That God is very concerned and he's concerned ultimately about you. But the reason why you can't connect and you are concerned about things that he should be concerned about. You are taking up his role. He's the one who's Lord. There ain't nothing you can do about it. There ain't nothing you can control about it. There's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So I've come this morning to encourage somebody. Though it's death all around us, though there's a crucifixion happening, in the land though people have been nailed to a cross to the cross of life to the cross of sickness to the cross of death there was one there was one cross and it was at Calvary that had already defeated every sin every disease every spirit of bondage that we have no control over the God that sits high and also looks low took off his Shekinah glory put himself in flesh and made the decision to come down on the earth for one purpose, for one victory, for one breakthrough, for one assignment, and that was to die, my God, for you and I. And even though he had been cursed, even though he had been betrayed, even though he had been scourged, they crucified him, hung him high, stretched him wide, but they made a mistake and lifted the cross up. A songwriter said, if I, my God, be lifted up, oh God, I'll draw all men unto me. Not only is this a song, but there's also the scripture. And as the scripture has said, when they lifted him up, that was the mistake that they put in the earth's realm to defeat my God, the enemy, because salvation and deliverance.
deliverance was offered to the entire world. So what am I saying? How can I get through all of my problems, through all of my burdens, through all of my concerns? I got one sentence to give you advice on this morning. God said, simply get in the flow. When you get in the flow, you get in the spirit of obedience. When you get in the flow, you get in the spirit of what does God say. When you get in the flow, you begin to shed yourself of the spirit of pride. When you get in the flow, you begin to humble yourself and understand that the word is true. That if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then God said, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins and I'll heal the land. But he can't heal us if there's a breach in the flow. He can't hear us if there's a breach in our prayer life. He can't hear us if there's a breach in our walk of righteousness. But I bid you to do like I'm doing. I decided, Cheryl, in this season, when society laughs at us as Christians, in this season, when it looked like all is going wrong, in this season, when people are scared, in this season, when their concerns are legitimate, in this season, when people are suicidal, in this season, we're glued to CNN. In this season, we're glued to Fox. In this season, we're glued wanting to know the status of the United States. All I can tell you in my simplicity is I've decided that I'm going with the flow. And I know if there's a flow of air, if there's a flow of currency, if there's a flow, hallelujah, of the wind, then there also has to be a flow of life. The Bible says, out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. Not dead waters, but living waters. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it, my God more abundantly. So what is the answer to realign yourself to be able to go with the flow? You got to accept the piercing. Why do you have to be pierced? Because it was already prophesied. I got to be pierced because it's an assignment. I got to be pierced because it's prophetic fulfillment. I got to be pierced and then the piercing got to happen when every He need a witness to give you, oh my God, to give the world a witness that this was not by your own hands. Therefore, you're not going to get the glory for this. Hallelujah. And I want to tell somebody, maybe you're going through hell. Maybe you're going through high water so that you can become a living epistle so that somebody else can testify I remember when she was homeless. I remember when he was sick. I remember when he was addicted. I remember when he was crucified in the church. I remember when he was crucified in the world system. I remember when they was bound by drugs. But somehow, since they got pierced in their side, since I seen the flow of something called blood and water, and what was the purpose of the blood and the water? Well, water means cleansing, but blood means covenant. And the blood caused the covenant to be made with God to guarantee that we would be cleansed of all our sin. So I bid you to look to the hills from whence cover your help. Your help comes from above. Therefore, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away, my God, the sin of this world. What you worried about? Stop worrying. Stop fretting. Fret not thyself because of 
evil doers, neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. Come on here. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. In other words, stop being afraid. The Bible says he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind. So the flow of blood combined with the flow of water to cleanse us and to give us a covenant agreement signed not in ink, but in blood. I wish somebody would say, I'm sanctified in my blood covenant with God. And he didn't just in the covenant agreement and don't just give you a promise of salvation but when you get in the flow you also have access to deliverance so you get salvation you get deliverance you get benefits and you get to overcome overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony what am I saying what are you saying this morning, Sister Preacher? I'm telling you to let your fears go. They're legitimate. They're earnest. But Jesus died after looking fear in the face and gave up the ghost. And then they pierced him in his side. In the side where the first Adam was put to sleep so that woman could be taken from his side to be created. Therefore, he had to be pierced. Out of his side came blood and water, cleansing and covenant to also include the women, giving us a right to the tree of life. I want to let you know, everybody who's listening all over this nation and all over this world, Jesus is simply saying on this morning to get in the flow and I made a personal commitment I'm going to stay in the flow I'm going with the flow because when I stay in the flow his yoke is easy and his burden is light when I stay in the flow the benefits come to me naturally I don't have to network I don't have to hustle I don't have to lower my standards all I gotta do is wait on the Lord and be of good courage and trust him when I can't trace him. You see, it requires faith, and your faith will be developed through tribulation. So think it not strange the fiery darts of the enemy. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Things are abnormal, you got that. <laughs> and nobody even trying to lie to you. <laughs> this is not normal, but we will live in a new normal. Please stop worrying. And let the Lord Jesus Christ be Lord in your life, Lord over your business, Lord over your family, and even Lord over your broken heart. To those of you who may be broken on this morning, I challenge you to give God another chance and to make a decision to still go with the flow. Because if anybody had the right to abandon their assignment, it was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He decided to die for us, the same people that betrayed him. Beat him, scourged him, and then pierced him after he had given up the ghost. Why? Because all of it had within it purpose. The flow of blood and water had to happen to fulfill prophecy. And maybe you are being pierced where you are. Maybe you feel like you've been crucified. I want to let you know it feels harsh. It's a strange place. It's different. You got all the reasons in the world to complain. But really, is that the only thing you can do? Have you been reduced to that? You can't think of any reason why you should give God a praise in spite of what you are going through now? You mean to tell me that the positives don't outweigh the negatives? Hallelujah. I've decided to lift my hands and say, thank you, Lord, for I won't complain. Hallelujah. I challenge you to chasten your mind, chasten your spirit, and discipline your thoughts 
to first make up in your mind that you have decided for God you will live and for God you will die. And once you make that decision, not just verbally, but in your behavior and in your daily walk, eventually you give up what you can't control to him. Why? Because you are not Lord. You are the servant of the Lord. And the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So please stop worrying about things you cannot control and make a decision to speak peace to your situation, peace to your circumstances, despite how crazy they may be. You're already hanging on a cross of life and now somebody comes and pisses you in your side. It had to happen because it was prophesied. But out of that piercing is gonna come the flow of cleansing power and a covenant agreement to solidify your relationship with your father. And anytime there is a blood covenant that had, that means there was a sacrifice. Jesus was sacrificed so that we didn't have to be. He substituted the blood of animals and became the access point to his father. Therefore tearing, hallelujah, the curtain that separated the holy from the holy of holies and became the high priest at that moment. Giving all of us access to the right to have a right to the tree of life. You don't need to go into a confessional booth. You do not need to confess your sins to a man or a woman to be saved. Hallelujah. He died to substitute the need to have to confess every week. That's just too much work for me. I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just letting you know, just in case you didn't know. Jesus is the high priest of the world. And he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And if you want to change the trajectory of your life, if you want to stop living in fear and anguish, I'm not telling you to stop questioning and stop, you know, these are reasons to be a little unnerved. But at the end of the day, what are you going to do about it? But just keep living. And you cannot continue to live in anxiety and fear. You cannot continue to think that you can control everything, but you can't. We need God. He's bigger, smarter, and better. And so if you have graduated from the school of hard knocks and have received your PhD in trauma, <laughs> I want to let you know, still make a decision to go with the flow. God wants to come and to realign you with the natural flow of the currency of life. And you can only get access to that currency. Hallelujah. By accepting him as your Lord and Savior. So do this with me. Repeat these words. Say, Lord Jesus, I come. Acknowledging that I am a sinner. Lord, I need you to become my Lord, my Savior, and my Redeemer. I do not want to be left behind when you rapture your people. Save me today. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Set me free from all sin all addictions, all thoughts and behaviors that are interfering with my ability to flow. Thank you for the flow of blood, the flow of water, and today is the day that you've made, and I make the decision, I too am going with the flow. May God bless you and keep you in his care. Seed time and harvest is a biblical principle that God uses to bless his people. It is August, the eighth month of this year, and eight represents the number of new beginnings. The theme of the month at the Destiny House Christian Center is flow, and we are continuing to flow in worship by getting our seed in the ground. Make sure that you do not just glean from the word and do not Praise God and worship him in your giving. 
We can't pay him, but we can certainly continue to thank him by providing a seed back to his house just to see that the needs of the house continues without interruption. Why? Because we want to continue to flow to get the gospel to God's people. We have an array of methods that you can use, one being Cash App. Our handle is dollar sign Destiny HCC. For Zelle, use donation at dhcc.church and PayPal, Destiny House Christian Center at gmail.com. Don't have access to any of those platforms? No problem. Write out your check, make it payable to DHCC, and mail it to DHCC Incorporated, Post Office Box 139, Amityville, New York, 11701. Again, dollar sign Destiny HCC, Zell donation at dhcc.church, PayPal Destiny House Christian Center at gmail.com. And our mailing address is DHCC Inc., Post Office Box 139, Amityville, New York, 11701. You enjoy following us? Please continue to follow us on DHCC V Church by checking us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and our very own website, dhcc.church. Please join us every Sunday morning on these various platforms at 10 a.m. and again for Wednesday night worship, one hour of corporate prayer power, 7.30 p.m., where we pray and we praise and we worship. Should you have a prayer request, please send your prayer request to prayer at dhcc.church or you can visit our website at dhcc.church and click the icon for prayer request. We will add you to our weekly prayer list and do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is intercede on your behalf. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And please understand, there is a church that is keeping you up in prayer. I pray right now that God continue to bless you through the various platforms he has given us to bring forth the word to your home, to you in the hospital or wherever you may be. And I ask that you would continue to do the same for us. We thank you and we give God praise for being in a position for blessing you. DHCC V Church, keep us in your prayer. God bless you.